Hello, I'm Shaylee from Patterns by Shaylee, and this is week number nine of our Stars of the Forest Quilt Along for a Cause 2020. And um, we are going to be working on our fifth star. We are down to just four blocks. So when you're done with star number five, you have three weeks left until we can start assembling the quilt top and start our quilting. This block assembles in eight sections, so it's a few more sections than we have done in the last couple of stars but I assure you it's not too difficult. So let's go ahead and get through it. As usual, I've got everything pieced. If you are not familiar with the actual piecing process, um, go ahead and look back at some of my previous videos that will walk you through how to piece and specifically anything to look out for with this pattern. Um, that includes if you struggle maybe with um, assembling the sections that span more than one page when they print. Um, if you go back into some of my older videos from this quilt along, we'll walk through that as well. Um, another thing to notice when it comes to several of the pieces with um, this block, the sections span end to end. So you can piece these in roughly whatever order you'd like. Um, you're still gonna need to go directly side by side. You can't skip, obviously. Um, but if you are doing, say, white in this one or a light color for this block, you may consider starting here and working your way out. Um, or if you're fussy cutting that, which is what I kind of did. I wanted all of my seams to run right up the middle. Um, so with my F, H, G, and E blocks, I started with what is F3 and then worked my way out. So it's something you can do. If that confuses you, just stick with the standard, start at F1 and then work your way up number wise. Don't, don't confuse yourself because it's not necessary. This one has a lot of points that you're gonna need to make sure that you stick your straight pins through. Um, because of the way the patterns are going to fold up on top of each other, it could potentially have a little bit of density. Um, and that makes it more likely for the pattern to shift as you go. So definitely use your straight pins. Um, either pin it down once you've stuck it through and you've made sure everything's in the right place. You can either pin it down or you can glue baste or whatever method works for you so that the pieces don't shift as you sew them. Do that. Our first step is to assemble section A to section B. So here's section B and section A. I'll set the rest up over to the side to get out of the way. All right, and um, what I like to do is make sure that I'm laying it flat exactly according to this. Otherwise you may run the risk of not paying attention and attaching your A to the wrong part and then everything doesn't work quite right. Um, so start off by matching exactly to whatever coloring or planning page you've got printed with it. Um, so your B4 is gonna go to the wide sides of A2 and A3 because it would be pretty easy to put it on on this side. The easiest way to prevent that is to lay the block down and make sure that it matches exactly before you start pinning. While pinning A to B, you wanna make sure A3 and B3 line up perfectly as well as the corners. Now I'm going to make sure that it's set exactly back to how it was on the coloring or planning guide and I am going to sew section C on next. So we're gonna put section B to section C and B4 needs to go to the wide parts of C2 and C3. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure you stick a pin here at the corner of C3 where it attaches to B2. Now that we have section A, B, and C done, we need to add D along here. And again, you're gonna try and get the corners of D4 and D2 to line up to A2 and C2. Now that we have A, B, C, A, and D put together, we're going to add section E. 
which is one of these irregular shaped guys that looks a little bit to me like a house. And it's gonna go just like that. And you're gonna try and match right here in the seams so that your um, elongated diamond is going to extend. And so um, these will pair up nicely. Now I've got A, B, C, D, and E, so I'm gonna do the exact same thing with F as I did with E on the opposite side. Now I've got A, B, C, D, E, F, and I'm gonna add G to this far end. And then I need to make sure, again, the elongated diamond matches pretty exactly. And you're gonna to wanna to try and get this point at G6 and G7 to match right into the corner of D5 and F5. Now we just need to repeat with H, the same thing that we did to G, so right here and right here in the corners. You can tell I kind of missed a point there, um, and honestly these are a little bit off but I'm not entirely certain that anyone else looking at it who's not either a quilter or a perfectionist would notice um, and so that's kind of my quilting philosophy if it seems like no one else is going to notice I'm just being too critical and I should just leave it um, and so that's what I'm going to do this time um, and I'm not going to beat myself up about it and I know some of the blocks that we've had, um, some of the quilt along members have seemed like they're upset with themselves um, out of how it's turning out. But the best part about this quilt along is even if every single seam you sew is wonky, the child who receives it is still gonna know that you donated something that you spent a great deal of time and energy on just because you wanted to spread some love through the world. Um, and so there it is. This is our fifth star. We've only got one more left. I look forward to next week.